What's up everybody? Welcome back to Rule Hard Garage. Today I'm going to give you some time-saving tips on how you can turn a messy garage into a manageable workspace. And if you like this video, go ahead, like it, hit the sub button, and if you care, in the comments below, go ahead and let me know if you have any tips on how you keep your garage clean. like me, you make messes, especially when you're making things. Hey, shit happens. You get excited, your project's almost done, next thing you know, you got a pile of tools on the bench and you're more interested in writing what you just finished making than cleaning up the mess. I understand. I'm going to give you some tips on how you can clean up faster, keep your workspace cleaner, and work more efficiently. When I ran a motorcycle shop, I learned a couple things about making things run more efficiently. Now I hadn't perfected this until I was inspired by a fellow maker named Adam Savage, which you might know from shows like Mythbusters, and I started implementing some of his techniques into my motorcycle workshop, and those are the tips I'm going to share with you today. So let's jump right into it. Tip one is called first order retrievability. Now this is something that I took right out of Adam Savage's book and I'm gonna take you over to my two workspaces and show you exactly what I mean by first order retrievability. Well, there's two things. The first thing is every tool has a home. Some tools belong on this side of the shop and some tools belong on the other side of the shop. If every tool has its home, you don't take a tool from its home to another home because it's not gonna get brought back home. If you can grab it, you can use it, and you can put it away within a reasonable distance, then you're more likely to do that, right? You can see several different workspaces here. I have my main workbench. Uh, I have an electrical bench that I'm kind of putting together. I have this kind of assembly area with some tools behind me, and I also have my frame jig and kind of like my frame fabrication area. When I really started focusing on developing this technique, I was actually working in a body shop and everybody worked off their own cart. So it only made sense to me to try to turn this cart into as many different things as possible. So I have a vise on it, I have this replaceable worktop, I've got some specialty tools on the back side, I've got my regular tools on the front. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that we're down close to the ground. That's because this cart is pretty much primarily used when I'm working on bikes kind of in this main bay here. Uh, these are bikes that aren't up on the lift, these aren't projects, this is just, you know, oil changes and stuff like that. I also use this when I'm working on cars, and I also don't have a lift, so again, I'm always on the ground. That's why I have these things down on the ground, because if I'm laying on the ground or I'm down on this seat, I don't have to get up and down to put these tools away, everything that I need is right here. Now, this is a work in progress, so keep in mind that it's always kind of changing and developing, and you can do that same thing with yours as well. The other part of first order retrievability is drawers are where things go to die. If you put things in drawers, you're less likely to go and put them away, and you're also not gonna keep that drawer clean because out of sight, out of mind, right? So I try to keep most of my things either in a rack or hanging up on the wall or somewhere where I can grab them in first order. There's that word again. Now, I don't necessarily 100% believe that drawers are where things go to die. I'm a big believer in drawers, and I like to organize my drawers, but we'll talk about that in another video. That stuff that was from the bench over there, and as you see, I'm just going to pop it right back in its place where it's supposed to go. Nice and easy cheesy. This tool, not in its home. See? Perfect example. Tip number two is focus. Now I'm gonna break this down into several different things, but the first thing is workspace. You need to focus on a workspace. Like you just seen with first order retrievability, I have a cart that is kind of one workspace and then I have an actual assembly area slash uh, stand that is a whole different workspace and that's why those spaces have different tools. They're two different workspaces. Now this is also important to keep track of when you're actually trying to clean up a mess. You need to pick that workspace, stick with that workspace until it's through and through clean. You also need to focus on surfaces. The surface is where things tend to accumulate. That's where the mess begins to build. Now, things might have very specific little spots and shelves where they need to go, but we're not gonna work on that yet. We're gonna focus on the surface of the workspace that we're working on, and we're gonna focus on groups of things 
and put them into groups on this surface and you're gonna see that this mess is turning into a manageable mess, which is what we're going for. We're gonna head over to a couple different workspaces in my shop and we're gonna use these techniques to clean them up and I'm gonna kinda talk you through it and show you how I implement these techniques in the real world. So let's go. I'm gonna tell you exactly how I'm gonna break this mess down into groups so that we can focus on the groups and get the floor, our surface, cleaned up. Uh, I'm gonna focus on laundry, uh, we'll do trash, we'll do outdoor stuff, and we'll do kids toys. That's the groups that we're gonna break them into. I'm just gonna kinda separate things, then we'll put stuff away. Now, we're gonna blame the skateboard on the kid. It's actually my fault, but it's okay to blame things on other people. That's a secret tip. Don't tell anyone else. Don't overthink the groups. Don't overthink it, just kinda jump in. Make some groups, because you're gonna go through and you're gonna have to refine them. This is something that's totally unrelated to anything, uh, but it needs to go in the basement, and I know all this stuff's going in the basement, so I also put it there. You don't have to get crazy about it. Making these groups is what makes it easy to put these things away. The point of this is to make sense of it so it can be manageable. The next surface is the welding bench, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna separate it into groups, and then we're gonna put it all away. So just looking at it, it looks like I'm gonna have uh, a bunch of stuff that's gotta go on my cart, it's kind of metal fabrication stuff. The markers are out, those have a specific spot. Some trash, probably some things that need to go inside. Uh, we're gonna focus on that, we're gonna get them into groups, and then we're gonna get everything put away. This is supposed to go over here. Oh, we'll clean that up later. What I thought I was starting with and what I ended up with kind of changes a little bit. Again, just jump right into it, start making groups. Again, as you can see, the surface is clean. We've accomplished what we wanted to. We took a mess, we turned it into a manageable mess, and then we put everything away. time-saving tips and how you can turn your messy garage into a manageable workspace. Uh, we used a couple different situations so that you guys can see how these specific rules can apply to different places. You don't have to go crazy about it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys want to keep watching more garage tips, if you want to see some builds, uh, moto vlogs, I got some trips coming up. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, stay filthy.